Part 1. The Danger and the Promise. The Challenge of, of Parenting. <coughs> parenting is one of the most challenging, demanding, and stressful jobs on the planet. It is also one of the most important, for how it is done influences in a great measure the heart and soul and consciousness of the next generation, their experience of meaning and connection, their repertoire of life skills, and their deepest feelings about themselves and their possible place in a rapidly changing, changing world. Yet those of us who become parents do so virtually without preparation or training, with little or no guidance or support, and in a world that values producing far more than nurturing, doing far more than being, the best manuals on parenting can sometimes serve as useful references, giving us new ways of seeing situations and reassuring us, especially in the early years of parenting when we are dealing with special problems, that there are various ways to handle things and that we are not alone. But what these books often do not address is the inner experience of parenting. What do we do with our own mind, for instance? How do we avoid getting swallowed up and overwhelmed by our doubts? Our insecurities by the real problems we face in our lives. By the times when we feel inwardly in conflict and the times when we feel in conflict with, with others including our children, nor do they indicate how we might develop greater sensitivity and appreciation for our children's inner experience. To parent consciously requires that we engage in an inner work on ourselves as well as in the outer world or nurturing and caring for our children. The how-to advice that we can draw upon from books to help us with the outer work has to be complemented by an inner authority that we can only cultivate within ourselves through our own experience. Such inner authority only develops when we realize that in spite of all the things that happen to us that are outside of control, out of our control, through our choices in response to such events and through what initiate ourselves we are still in a large measure, authoring our own lives. In the process, we find our own ways to be in this world, drawing on what is deepest and the best in, and most creative in us. Realizing this, we may come to see the importance of our children and for ourselves, taking responsibility for the ways in which we live our lives and for the consequences of the choices we make. Inner authority and authenticity can be developed to an extraordinary degree if we do the, that inner work. Our, our authenticity and our wisdom grow when we purposely, purposely bring awareness to our own experience as it unfolds. Over time, we can learn to see more deeply into who our children are and what they need and take the initiative in finding appropriate ways to nourish them and further their growth and development. We can also learn to interpret their many different, sometimes puzzling, signs and to trust our, our, our ability to find a way to respond appropriately. Continuous attention, examination, and thoughtfulness are essential even though, even to know what we are facing as parents, much less how we might act effectively to help our children to grow in healthy ways. Parenting is above all uniquely personal. Ultimately, ultimately it has to come from deep inside ourselves. Someone else's way of doing things will never do. Which have to find a way that is our own, learning from all useful sources along the way. We have to learn to trust our own instincts and to nourish and refine them. But in parenting, even what we thought and did yesterday that worked out well, then it is not necessarily going to help today. We have to stay very much in the present moment to sense what might be required. And when our own inner resources are depleted, we have to have effective and healthy ways to replenish them. To restore ourselves without it being at, ex at the expense of our children. Becoming a parent may just happen, may happen on purpose or by, by accident, but however it comes about, parenting itself is a calling. It calls us to recreate our world every day, every day, to meet it freshly in every moment. Such a calling isn't actually nothing less than a rigorous spiritual discipline, a quest to realize our truest, deepest nature as a human being. The very fact that we are a parent is continually asking us to find and express what is most nourishing and most loving, most wise and caring in ourselves to be as much as we can our best selves. As with any spiritual discipline, 
The call to parent mindfully is filled with enormous promise and potential. At the same time, it also challenges us to do the inner work on ourselves to be fully adequate to the task so that we can fully engage in this hero, hero's journey, this quest of a lifetime that is a human life lived. People who choose to become parents take on, on this hardest of the jobs for no salary, often unexpectedly at a relatively young and inexperienced age, and often under condition of economic strains and insecurity. Typically, the journey of parenting is embarked upon without a clear strategy or over, 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 overarching view of the terrain. In much the same intuitive and optimistic way, we approach many other aspects of life. We learn on the job as we go. There is, in fact, no other way. But to begin with, we may have no sense of how much parenting augurs a totally new set of demands and changes in our lives, requiring us to give up so much that is familiar and to take on so much that is unfamiliar. Perhaps this is just as well, since ultimately each child is unique and each situation is different. We have to rely on our hearts, our deepest human instincts, and the things we carry from our own childhood, both positive and negative, to encounter the unknown territory of having and raising children. And just as in life itself, we faced with a range of family, social, and cultural pressures to conform, pressures to conform, to frequently understate and unconscious norms, and with all the inherent stress of caring for children. As parents, we often find ourselves, in spite of all our best intentions and our deep love for our children, running more or less on a romantic pilot. Pilot. To the extent that we are chronically preoccupied and invariably pressed by it for time, we may be out of touch with the richness that Thorio called the bloom of the present moment. This moment may seem far too ordinary, routine, and fleeting to single, single out for attention. Living like this, it's easy to fall into a dreamy kind of autom autom automacity as far as our own parenting is concerned. Believing that whatever we do will be okay as long as the basic love for our children and desire for their well-being is there, we can rationalize such a view by telling ourselves that children are resilient creatures, resilient creatures, and that the little things that happen to them are just that, little things that may have ne no effect on them at all. Children can take a lot, we tell ourselves. But as I am reminded time and again when people recount their stories in their stress reduction clinic and in mindfulness workshops and, and retreats around the country, for many people childhood was a time of either frank or subtle betrayals, betrayals or one of both or for both parents, out of control to another, one degree or another, often raining down various combinations of unpredictable, unpredictable, unpredictable terror, violence, scorn, and meanness on their own children out of their own addiction, deep unhappiness or ignorance. Sometimes in the deepest of ironies accompanying such terrible betrayals, can protestation of parent love making the situation even crazier and harder for the children to fathom. For, other, for others, there is the present pain of having been invisible, unknown, neglected and appreciated as children. And there is also the sense that what is there is also the sense that what this the rising stress on virtually all fronts of the society, an accelerating sense of time urgency and insufficiency. Things are strained to and often beyond the breaking point in families and getting worse, no better generation by generation. A woman who attended a five day mindfulness retreat said, I noticed this week as I was doing the meditation that I feel like I have pieces missing. That there, there are parts of me that I just can't find when I become still and look underneath the surface of my mind. I'm not sure what it means, but it's kind of made me a little bit anxious. Maybe when I start to practice the meditation a little more regularly, maybe I'll find out what is stopping me from being whole. But I really feel whole, holes in my body or in my soul that keeps me pushing mountains in front of myself everywhere I go. My husband says, but why did you do that? There was a big opening here, and I just say, I don't know, but I, but if there is a way to block it up, I will. I feel a little like a Swiss cheese. I have felt this form from when I was small. I had some losses when I was small. I think part of me were removed and taken from me, by me, by deaths, and by other people. 
My sister died when I was young and my parents went into a sort of depression. I think until they died, I think parts of me just got taken to feed them. I felt that I was a very like, lo lively young go-getter when I was young and I felt parts of me just being taken and I can't seem to be able to regain those parts now. Why can't be that way? What happened to me? Parts of me have gotten lost and when I'm sitting here today meditating, I realize that I'm not looking for those parts and I don't know where they are. I don't know how to become whole until I find those parts that are gone. Now my whole family has died. They've taken all the parts and left and I'm still here with the Swiss cheese. With the Swiss cheese. A chilling image, the parts of this woman were taken to feed her parents. But this happens and the consequences to the children reverberate throughout their lives. To compound matters, in the name of law, parents often cause deep hurt and harm to their children, as when they beat them, to teach them lessons, saying things like, this is for your own good, this hurts me more than it hurts to you, or I'm only doing this because of I, because I love you. Often these very words that were said to them as children when they were beaten by their parents, as, as was shown by their Swiss psychiatrist Alice Miller in her seminar work in the name of love, Frequent unbridled, unbridled rage, contempt, hatred, intolerance, neglect, and abuse rain down on children from parents who are unaware of or have ceased to care about the full import of their actions and who will never treat friends or strangers in such a way. This happens across all social classes in our society. In our view, an aromatic and examined lowest common denominator approach to parenting, whether it manifests in over violence or not causes deep and frequently long-lasting harm to children under the developmental trajectories. Unconscious parenting also conspires to arrest our potential growth as parents as well. From such unconsciousness come all too commonly sadness, missed opportunities, hurt, resentment, blame, restricted and diminished views of the self and the world, and ultimately isolation and alienation on all sides. Isolation and alienation on all sides. We can remain away to the challenge challenges and the calling of parenthood, this, this does not have to happen. On the contrary, we can use all occasions that arise in, with our children to break down the barriers in our own minds, to see more clearly in ourselves and to be more effectively present for them. We live in a culture which does not place great value on parenting as value and honor work. It is considered perfectly acceptable for people to give 100% to their careers or their relationships or to finding themselves, but not to the children. The implication is that giving a child such a high degree of consistent, the body highest priority, attention will only spoil the child, that it cannot lead a good and only stems from a parent, parent's neurotic needs for control and attachment rather than from a respect for life and for the interconnectedness of all things and from the unique joys of parents-child relationships. Society at large and its institutions and values which both create, create and reflect the microscope, microscope, microscomes, microscosm of our individual minds and values contribute in major ways to the undermining of parenting. Who are the highest paid workers in our country? Certainly no, day, no daycare workers or teachers whose work so much supports the work of, our parents, of parents. What are the role models, the supportive networks, job sharing and part-time jobs for mothers and fathers who want to stay home with their children for more than a few weeks after they're born? What is the universal health coverage, the, the subsid, subsides for young parents, support fa for parent classes, parenting classes, adequate parenting leave programs which will, by their prevalence, tell us that healthy parenting is your most important and is valued highly by this society as a whole. Certainly, there are bright spots and reasons for hope. Countless parents across the country see parenting as a sacred trust and manage to find harmful and creative ways to guide and nurture their children, often in the face of great obstacles and odds. There are imaginative efforts by people of all across the country involved in programs that teach parenting skills, communication skills, violence prevention, stress reduction, and that offer counseling services to parents and families. There are also many groups engaged in community building and political lobbying on behalf of children. Mari Piffer's book, Reviving Ophelia, 
and the shelter of each other Robert Bly, the civil society, and Daniel Goleman's emotional intelligence give voice to the enorm enormity of the problem and point, point to our potential as a society to set it right if we are able to tap what is best in our country, in our families, and in ourselves. William and Martha Sears, the baby book on attachment parenting provides a new framework honoring the needs of infants and babies. But the problems are staggering and are pervasive and are creating a society in which it is increasingly difficult for families to raise healthy children. In many households today, there is no adult at home when the children come home from school. The parents as well as the neighbors as the neighbors are out trying to make a living. Children are often left to their own devices. They may have more contact with the world of TV and sometimes with the worlds of drugs and crime that they do with the a caring adults with caring adults. Teenage violence, the fastest growing sector of crime in the area, peaks between 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. each school day. Tangible and daily expression of love, support, energy, and interest from living. Breathing adults and respected elders are becoming more and more rare in our homes and in our neighborhoods. While we are subject to a large to large society, social forces that shapes our lives and the lives of our children, we also have to, the capacity as individuals to make conscious and international choices about how we are going to relate to our circumstances and to the area in which we find ourselves. We all have the potential to chart our own paths to bring more attention and inter 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 intentionality to our lives and to attempt to see and honor deep soul needs for our children as, we, as well as our own as best we can. Charting such a path for ourselves is made easier by having a large framework within which to examine and come to understand what we are doing and what needs to be done. A framework that can be helped to keep us on course even though things may be constantly changing and our next steps from unclear mindfulness can provide such fr a framework. For example, new and important doors is in our own minds can open just by entertain ent entertaining the possibility that there are alternative ways of perceiving situations and that we may have more op options open to, to us in any moment than we realize. Relating to the whole of our, fam mind of our lives mindfully to both our, our inward and, and our outward experiences is a profoundly positive and practical alternative to the driven aromatic pile of mode in which we operate so much of the time without even knowing it. This is particularly important for parents as we try to juggle juggle all of competing demands we carry from day to day while providing for our, ch our children and giving them what they need in an increasingly, increasingly stressful and complex world.